And right now we're going to talk to Mike Gear, who's with the Pennsylvania Family Institute. Mike, thanks for stopping by. Glad to do it and glad to, to uh, talk to people over the web about uh, our work at Pennsylvania Family Institute. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your group. Where are you based? How many people work with you? That kind of thing. Well, we uh, started in 1989. We're based in Harrisburg, which is the state capital of Pennsylvania, but we have uh, some employees out in western Pennsylvania as well. We have about 40,000 families on our mailing list and then working at our headquarters building just a couple of blocks from the capital, we have a staff of five plus additional uh, part-time folks who work with us either at the headquarters or in other parts of the state. Tell me about the, the issues that you work on on an ongoing basis. What's important in Pennsylvania? Well, uh, you know, my colleague in Alabama, Gary Palmer, often said that every issue is a family issue. So we, it's a broad range of issues, quite honestly, that we deal with. But what are key to what is key to us at Pennsylvania Family Institute? Sanctity of life is very important to us. The protection of the institution of marriage and of the family is of vital importance. Religious liberty and freedom issues, allowing our First Amendment rights to be uh, carried forward. We're very concerned about educational freedom and options for families through school choice. We even have a program at Pennsylvania Family Institute called the Family Choice Scholarship Program. Uh, last year we gave away over a million dollars in scholarships for kids uh, to attend the school of their parents' choice. Wow. Yeah, it's a great program. Oh, really has is. that been going on again? Well, it was a law that w we helped get passed in 2001, uh, the Education Improvement Tax Credit Program, and it's grown every year since then. And uh, we're proud to have that. What happens is businesses give a uh, get a tax credit from the state off their state taxes to give to us, and then we take that money and turn it right around and give to families to send their children to, to Christian schools of their choice. It's, it's, it's a wonderful program. It's a terrific idea. It, it, tell me how you work to influence legislators and, and lawmakers, and also how you work to influence outcomes in other venues up there. Well, it's kind of a threefold strategy. Number one is educating the public. Uh, the, the most influential people in impacting legislators are not lobbyists, not the special interest groups, but the, it's the citizens themselves. So we use a variety of methods to try to educate the citizens about the responsibility to be good citizens, about the issues that they need to be involved in, and then how to effectively use their voice to influence the process. We work with the news media. We do op-ed columns in newspapers. We produce um, newsletters and magazines at Pennsylvania Family Institute. We have our website, pafamily.org. We do radio programs to educate the citizens. Secondly, we do some direct lobbying with the legislature. We do have staff members that walk the hall of the legislature. Even sometimes I do that, sitting face-to-face -face with legislators, with policymakers, being the voice for the family in Pennsylvania. So that's an, another part of it. A third part of it is working through citizens groups and especially churches and pastors to educate them to say Christians' responsibility is to be salt and light, to be a voice in the culture, and we provide the resources and methods for them to do that. When all those things work together, the media, the educational efforts, the citizens, the churches, uh, we think that we can really affect change, and we've, we've proven that over the years. We don't win every battle by any stretch of the imagination, but we are making a difference. What's down the road for you? What's in the future for PFI? Well, the marriage amendment process is one that's key uh, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. That's going to go on for a number of years. Uh, now more than 25 states have passed marriage amendments. We don't have one in Pennsylvania. We need a constitutional amendment that says marriage is between one man and one woman in Pennsylvania, and we won't accept any alternatives to that. That's a long process. We need citizen involvement in that. That's going to be key for us. Expanding school choice is key. The legislature, a lot of people who are watching this from Pennsylvania will know about the controversy with our legislature concerning pay raise and things. We're involved with other groups in helping clean up government in Pennsylvania and allowing citizens to have a voice in their government. So we've got a, a broad range of ways that people can get involved. Our website's probably the best point of contact for people is to just go to pafamily.org. You talked about how you can't win them all. You win some, you lose some. What keeps you motivated? Where does your energy come from? Well, that, that's a good question. I guess I'm motivated, number one, because I feel called to this work. I believe that uh, God has called me as a Christian, as a citizen, to be involved in, in trying to create a better future for my family and for other families should the Lord tarry. And so that's vitally important. Number two is to recognize that those who went before us fought long and hard to see the changes and bring the freedoms that we have. It doesn't happen overnight. We may just be stepping stones for people who are going to come after us to make the real difference. God calls us to be faithful. He's responsible for the results. And as long as we trust in him, uh, we can have that faith and we can have that uh, confidence and joy in following the Lord. Mike, thanks for talking with us. Glad, glad to do it, and we appreciate Citizen Link very much.